Good afternoon. My name is Keiko Zoll, and I am here on behalf of March Like a Mother for Black Lives, a movement started by LaToya Gale, who's up here in front. Hey, girl. And Sarah Adrisu, two black moms in Boston. As a woman of color myself, I appreciate the opportunity to support their work. March Like a Mother seeks to leverage the collective transformative power of motherhood to eradicate systemic racism through grassroots advocacy and was formed after the murder of George Floyd in 2020. We are honored and humbled to be included in today's program. I am a mother. I am a wife. I am a daughter, a sister, a cousin, and auntie to two beautiful nieces. As you can see, I often describe myself in relation to others, but there is one part of my identity that is just me and me alone, my body. And even then, I have a pretty complicated relationship with my body, especially my reproductive system. Because you see, at 18, I lost an ovary because of a tumor. And then at 26, I was diagnosed with premature ovarian failure. This infertility diagnosis means that I can never have my own genetic children. Infertility was a devastating blow to my psyche, my marriage, and my identity as a woman. You might be thinking, I'm a strange bedfellow to the reproductive justice movement. I can't have children of my own, yet here I stand, in full support of abor abortion rights by way of Roe v. Wade. I'm very lucky that I became a mother, thanks to science and the very generous gift of eggs donated by a dear friend of mine. And while adoption is an option for many couples with infertility, it wasn't the path to parenthood for us. Without assisted reproductive technology, I wouldn't have had the son that I have today, and for that, I am forever grateful. But I also have Roe v. Wade to thank, too, because many of the laws and court cases that threaten reproductive choice also threaten access to medical treatment for infertility patients, including procedures such as in vitro fertilization or IVF. Roe v. Wade protects these alternate paths to parenthood. Roe set a powerful precedent not just on the legality of abortion in the United States, but was specifically argued on the premise of a patient's right to privacy while making medical decisions with their doctor. And that's what makes overturning Roe so chilling and frightening as so many sectors of American life become collateral damage. Take for example, I'm half Japanese. My parents, my father is from Japan, my mom's from Florida. They got married 52 years ago when uh, interracial marriage had only just been legalized two years prior thanks to Loving v. Virginia, which was another case argued on the basis of a person's right to privacy. If Roe v. Wade is overturned, that right to privacy could be revoked for every American. My marriage would be illegal. And so would things like same-sex marriage and access to contraceptive medicine and medical procedures, including vasectomies or the use of the pill for non-contraceptive purposes. All of these could be made illegal. Roe and cases like it have made it possible for me to marry the person that I love and become a mother with that person. But Roe means so much more to me personally because it also saved my life. Last summer, I began to experience debilitating, painful cramps and bleeding. One ultrasound by my gynecologist later, and we found out that my IUD had become embedded in the wall of my uterus. For those that don't know, it's not supposed to do that. Now, my IUD was not for contraception, but it served as an artificial hormone source to replace those that my body does not naturally produce. I had to have an outpatient medical procedure known as a dilation and curatage, or a DNC for short, to remove the IUD from my body. DNCs also support and assist pregnant people who are miscarrying, and it's also the same medical procedure that is used for some surgical abortions. That only represents half of all abortions in the United States, according to the CDC. Surgery via DNC with a safe, effective, and preferred method for this exact type of scenario was the best way to remove it. Without the kind of medical care that Roe makes possible, I would have needed major abdominal surgery to remove it, cutting through my abdominal and uterine walls. And had I left the IUD in, it could have ruptured my uterus. I could have developed an infection. I could have died. And of course, my experience is just one story and one outcome, a hypothetical. But we know the reality of an America without the protections of Roe v. Wade because generations of women lived through it or died because of it. Overturning Roe could impact not just every woman of childbearing age, but every American. And if we're being honest with ourselves here, 
Roe v. Wade isn't just about abortions. The GOP seeks to criminalize a legitimate medical procedure and punish women in the process. They refuse to enable our nation to move beyond its white, Eurocentric, heteronormative, Christian patriarchal origins to become the America we all deserve. Overturning Roe v. Wade is not as pro-life as they would like you to believe. It is anti-American. We must not stand idly by and let this happen to us. After the murder of George Floyd, March Like a Mother for Black Lives was formed to call on all mothers to stand in solidarity against anti-blackness and racism. Today, we call on all current and hopeful parents to stand in solidarity against anti-choice judicial decisions and legislation so that every person in this country has the freedom to choose to become a parent and what happens to their bodies. Mm -hmm. yes. We are fortunate to live in a state where the lives of women are valued and protected. But that isn't the case universally, and we cannot neglect our sisters who have not been afforded these same protections in other states. Nearly half of this country will instantly ban abortions if Roe is overturned, thanks to 22 states with trigger laws. This will affect millions of women who will be desperate to seek abortion care. And even now, right now, grassroots networks within and outside of these states are mobilizing to build their own underground red railroad of supportive resources, including transportation, child care, funding, and more, so that these women in these states can access the abortion care they need and deserve, because abortion care is a human right. I am so deeply appreciative of the state representatives that have shown up here today, and we thank the state legislature for, pla for passing the Roe Act. We applaud recently announced plans to enact legislation that would make Massachusetts a safe haven, not only for those seeking abortion care from out of state, but for those providing it here. I respect you deeply, but it is not enough. We can and must do more. At the state level, we must ensure that a person's right to privacy is protected by law. Our federal delegation must advocate not only for the federal legalization of abortion care, but the protection of the right of privacy for every American. The leaked Supreme Court opinion was our clarion call. The protections of Roe v. Wade are no longer guaranteed. <coughs> we are not safe. Time is running out. They say a women's work is never done, and we cannot afford to wait to start the work with the warning about Roe that we've just been given. That work starts right here, right now. What will you commit to doing after this demonstration? I know this feels like it's all too much, but we cannot lose hope. We must all act in this moment. We must tell our stories. We must march. We must donate. We must vote. We must get out the vote. We must organize. We must mobilize right now, not just for the sake of every woman, but for ourselves for our children, and for every American. Thank you.